So I'm going to do a, a demonstration of a color study using a split complementary color scheme. And I've talked about that in some previous videos. It's called um, Benefits of Using Color Schemes. And just briefly, kind of a review, color schemes are picking certain colors from the color wheel and just using them for your painting. And it's a great way to study color to see what your colors on your palette can do, different mixtures, different combinations. Colors you wouldn't ordinarily use together, you're forced to in a color scheme. So it helps you think outside the box, color-wise. Also keeps you from just focusing on copying the photograph, because with a color scheme, you can't. You're stuck with a certain set of colors and you have to figure out what you can mix with those. So it's a great way to, again, learn about what your colors on your palette can do. I think more beneficial than color charts because it's within context of a landscape as opposed to just a bunch of tiny squares. So taking one photograph and doing three or four different color schemes for that image really stretches your knowledge of, of color. Looking at our uh, color wheel here, a split complementary, and again, I go over that, all the color schemes in the previous video. Split complementary is when you take two complementary colors, you know, red and green are complements, yellow and violet. Um, I'm using yellow, orange, and blue violet in this color scheme. So that's the complement, but I'm going to split the blue violet, and instead of using blue violet, I'm going to use the violet and blue. So the two colors on either side. So this is my color scheme. And I have blue here. So blue is a primary, it's a pure color, but the violet is a mixture of blue and red, obviously, and the yellow orange is a mixture of yellow and orange. So it's not a true red or a yellow. So instead it's a yellow orange. That becomes my yellow right here. And the violet, this is my closest color to red. So in a, in a sense, it becomes my red so that I have a red blue, yellow. Now, obviously violet's not red, but it is closest to red on my color scheme here. And of course, all colors come from red, yellow, blue. So when you think in terms of primary colors, you can kind of uh, see how to mix them a little bit better. And then of course, white, you're adding white to get the value changes. And just by adding white to any mixtures, you're changing the color slightly. And I can subtly add a little bit of yellow orange or just a little bit of violet. You know, any of the colors, I can be real subtle with the changes and come up with a total different color. So combinations of colors are innumerable when you, even just with three colors plus white. And remember value, I, I see value changes as a color change also. Aside from just being detail, value changes are also a different color. So this is the image I'm going to be painting. I was in uh, Colorado last year. So one of the images here, I'm changing the composition a little bit. But what I'm after is the effect of the light here. You got the sunlight on the hillside, the cloud shadows, the light and dark on the, sh uh, on the mountains, foregrounds all in shadow. So I'm going to find that shadow pattern and light pattern, which I've done here in my thumbnail drawing. You know, all this is shadow and I've got a definite shadow pattern here and back in here. So that's what you want to do with the thumbnail. Find those shadow patterns, which sets up your light patterns as well. So you got simple dark and light patterns. It makes it easy to transfer that to the canvas and simplify your your subject. And it helps when you're thinking the color wheel. Also mentioned this in the previous video, this color wheel. I think it's made by The Color Wheel. That's their name. You can find it on thecolorwheel.com. But they're in all the art stores, Michael's, Hobby Lobby, Jerry's, um, Dick Blick. And it's really helpful because I can spin it and see, you know, what the split complementary color scheme options are, as well as the triad Tetrad, which I don't use, uh, but it's very helpful. Helpful to get that. So here's my palette and setup. Here's my yellow orange, and it's a mixture of, you can't see the yellow, yellow's back in there, and orange. So mostly on the yellow side, because I don't want an orange. I want a yellow orange, and it is really definite. I don't want uh, a yellow orange that's too close to orange. It just kind of defeats the purpose. Same thing with the violet. 
I don't want a bluish violet or a um, red violet. I want a violet. So there's several different colors. This is um, mauve, Windsor Newton, which is pretty much a, a clean violet. So is deoxazine purple, which I also have from Windsor Newton, and then ultramarine blue. So those are my three colors. Now, I, when I do the color schemes, I find it easier to just do four or five values of each color because you know you have three colors plus white. But the minute you add these values, I got four or five values on the yellow. I've got a couple of values out of sight here at the bottom of the palette. But these value changes, and I'm pretty careful to get subtle changes. I don't want just big leaps. I want, you know, it takes five or six, seven values, piles of different values. That way, when I do a dark, I know I'm working within this range or that range. Half tones are in here and then the lights are down there. It just kind of makes it easier to simplify your values as well. So simplification is always key here. Then I'm drawing with a little bit of violet, pretty much drawing just what I saw in the thumbnail. Not much more than that. I, any more than that's just going to be covered up. No detail, uh, a lot of paint thinner, a little bit of violet. It's a eight by five inch canvas. So I don't do a lot of large color studies. It's a study to see what colors uh, work best for that scene. Um, so no sense doing it large. You can do a whole bunch. You can do three or four smaller ones in, in the amount of time it takes you to do one larger one. And if I do this larger, I will probably start with the color scheme to the block in and then add some other colors because you always, you know, you can cheat on your color schemes eventually. But the color scheme gives it a, a, a harmony. And again, it gets me away from just copying the photograph because I'm limited somewhat in what I can mix. So the skies aren't always going to be blue, grass isn't always going to be green. Again, helps you think outside the box and you want to do that color-wise, especially if you're working from photographs. I don't use color schemes outside. Kind of defeats the purpose. Outside is for mixing colors you see. So I might as well do that inside. Uh, but outside, you want to paint what you see um, and learn to mix what you see outside, the real thing. So I start first with the dark and I'm just going to work back to front. So the shadows on the mountains, I got a value here of blue and a slightly darker value here, a little bit of a bluish green. And when you think of blue green, you can think almost blue or a blue green that's almost green, but it's still within that range of, of blue green. It is a color on the color wheel, which I always tend to think of. I look at the reference, the photo, and I decide what color from the color wheel is that. And then you modify it to make it, make it work. And I'm using pretty thick paint no sense using real thin paint on these smaller paintings. Bigger painting, I tend to wash colors in thinly first to make sure the relationships are going to work and then go back and build up the lights. But here I'm starting fairly thick. The lights will be thicker than the darks anyway. So I can have pretty thick paint on the shadow areas as long as the lights are even thicker. Sometimes I use palette knife to lay in the lights. But now I'm getting a dark and light. Again, simple, simplified dark and light. So I got dark and light snow in the background mountain. I got dark and light mountain color, rock or hillside, grassy, a, a tree filled hillside, whatever it happens to be. Same thing here. I've got pretty much just right now, just shadow on the uh, mountain and light on the snow. I can come back. I'm going to get a little bit of variation of value in this mountain. Some shadowed snow, sunlit snow, shadowed rock area, and sunlit rock area. Right now I'm moving on to the middle ground mountain. Again, a little darker, gradually getting darker, still kind of a bluish green. Also using this dark here to cut into the snow. Hard to get the look of the brush strokes or the look of the snow with, with uh, the positive brush strokes. So lay it in, then take your mountain color and cut into the snow so you can kind of shape it up. Kind of negative painting to shape up the, the snow. Again, kind of a bluish green. Now I can vary this as I move along because this area is not going to be one color, one value. 
there's an overall color and value that fits in this mountain area, but I want to vary it some as I, as I come down. So um, you can get, again, just subtle variations. Got a little bit of a value change in there. This is slightly more violet. It's hard to see in the photo of that, but I'm trying to vary the color just slightly. Now the sunlight, I switch from cooler colors, which I've had so far, to show the depth and the effect of shadow or lack of sunlight. But now I'm moving into the warmer colors. I got warmer snow up here and I want warmer hillside. So I'm using more of the yellow, orange, and the blue. If I need to mute that, I'm gonna add a little bit of the violet. Whatever two colors I use, the remaining color is the color that's gonna mute it. That's always gonna be the case. And this is slightly more blue-green, even though it's light and warm. And this is slightly more yellow-green so that this comes in front of that. And that's what I want to do there, is show that depth. Despite what the photograph may show me, you know, there's a lot of variations of color, and I can come back and add some variations, some of the violet scrubbed into the yellow-green, maybe a bit more blue in the background to make it recede more. But starting out, I want it as simple as possible. I want to um, find a simple, value, dark and light, that's going to work as far as a big shape. I don't want to worry about small, tiny little color changes at this point. Now this is also blue-green, and this is blue-green, but this is closer to blue, so it stays back, it's cooler. This is a lot closer to green, it's almost on the green side. Still maybe a bit more blue than, than green. So, stays in shadow, but it is warmer than the background shadows, which, which is, is always the case. Your shadows are going to be slightly warmer as they come forward. Still going to be cool compared to the sunlit area, but not as cold as the background shadows. I'm uh, getting a little bit of sunlight on the background hill. Not much yellow, orange back in here. Um, if, if any, it's just going to be a small amount because yellow is the first color that disappears as objects recede, so the yellow-orange would be a lot less in there. I'm building up the lights here a little bit, and we'll have um, some trees eventually, too, with those dark accents. Oh, sky. Blocking in the sky here with violet, basically. That was my decision here. So I have two or three values. I have a couple of different darks. This dark, a little darker, and then the light violet. And I'm using those three values to set up the shapes of the clouds. Knowing I can come back and vary things a little bit. I can adjust things slightly, color-wise or value-wise. But setting it up real simple like that makes refining it possible. So don't get too detailed, too caught up into small color value changes right away. Now I've come back and I've added a little half tone in the light, a little darker dark into the shadow clouds, making it more subtle now. But here I kept the sky more strong contrast, more separation of the values. Then came back and made it more subtle. So don't go for subtlety right away. Go for subtlety after you establish the big dark and light shapes. Now I'm adding more color in the foreground. Foreground is more blue and yellow-orange. Now I'm adding bits of the violet in there. Or bits of violet and yellow-orange. Or blue and a little bit of yellow-orange. So a lot of variation. I'm trying to get some subtle variation in there. And the key for that is not to match the photo. The key is just to create some subtlety. Because that's what I see in the reference is subtlety. I'm looking at this field in here. There's just some subtlety in there. And as long as I show subtlety in the painting, it doesn't have to match color-wise. In fact, a little better if it doesn't. Using the color scheme helps me to harmonize the colors and get away from the uh, uh, desire to copy the photograph, which you really have to kind of get away from. So more subtle changes there. I'm going to put a road in here, even though it's not in the photograph. You can see I got a little violet here, some of the violet and yellow orange here, the blue and yellow orange. I said violet and orange, I meant violet and yellow orange. I stayed with the color scheme. And you can cheat 
But every time you cheat, or the more you cheat, the more you kind of lose that harmony and that idea of simplifying the color from the photograph to make it kind of develop your own color sense instead of copying it. Now I see this rose is just a muted violet, very light. So down in here on the palette of the lighter violets with a little bit of the lighter yellow orange for that. Can't be as light as the sunlit snow. So I have a, a relationship there I need to maintain the value relationships between each other knowing that the snow, sunlit snow, is the lightest. Probably some dark accents in the trees I'm going to put in here will be the darkest. So keeping that in mind helps me to key the values and keep the relationships between them right. Now blocking in, in just a slightly muted um, bluish green. So ultramarine blue, a little bit of or ultramarine blue and violet, but just a touch of the yellow orange. Not much violet, because that would really mute it maybe more than I want, but enough to keep it from just jumping out of the canvas. I don't want it to be too, too strong. And I'm trying to vary the, the space between the trees, uh, vary the sizes. Same thing in the background. Same color back here in those trees as these trees, but a bit more blue in the background trees and a bit more white. Because again, it's, a, it's a, a subtle value change to create depth in there. But I'm continually, like I got a little bit of violet in there, a little bit of violet here, some subtle changes between the uh, blue and the yellow orange in there. Trying to create a little bit of variation. And the more I work on this, the more um, start adding detail. A little bit more to the mountains back in there, a few more smaller trees, fence posts. Um, and I know at this point, I have to really think about how much do I want to add, no matter what the photograph gives me. There's a point where I overdo the detail, then the big shapes kind of break down and I lose that structure in, in, the, in the landscape. So keep it simple enough that um, these big dark and light shapes hold together. Because again, the more little darks and lights I put in these big dark and light shapes, the more they fall apart. It becomes uh, flat and way too busy with, with detail. So again, some yellow orange in here, some more of the road value, kind of breaking it up. And as I break it up with detail, value changes, I still want this big shape to hold together not to fall apart as a dark, which is so easy to do. So a little more violet in the hills back in here. So I got a subtle change of violet, uh, blue, green, blue, a little bit of yellow, orange in there to mute it slightly. And just subtle changes as I come forward. <clears throat> but again, keeping those big shapes together. And the colors here harmonize because everything, I'm using the same three, so you can't help but get color harmony. Also, it helps me to think outside the box color-wise because I can't match the photograph necessarily. Thanks for watching, and um, if you want to, the next video uh, is is on color schemes, the benefits of uh, using color schemes, and uh, don't forget to uh, like the videos as well.